This morning we are rounding off our time in Rotorua with an encapsulating attraction of geothermal activity and Maori culture. We are going to Tipuia. This morning we are heading straight to Tapuia, which is not only a geothermal park, but it also hosts Maori cultural experience, and we're going to experience both of those today. But Tapuia is even more famous for being the home of the Pohutu Giza, which is the largest Giza in the southern hemisphere. What a feat! The Pohutu Giza is an impressive sight, stacked upon layers and layers of silica terraces with water rushing down into the stream below, and there's so much steam billowing from the Giza itself, it's absolutely amazing. There's different vantage points that you can get all sorts of different angles to get the perfect photo. The Pahutu Geyser usually erupts twice every hour, but while we're here, which we're watching for about 30 minutes, it's doing a steady eruption for the whole time. And our guide tells us that the Pahutu Geyser just does its own thing usually, it behaves in different ways. For instance, 15 years ago, it erupted for 250 days straight. There's a loop track that takes us around the Tepuia Geothermal Park and the Pohutu Giza is the first thing that you actually see on that loop track and Robin and I are having a really hard time pulling ourselves away from it. It's just too amazing to stop watching. It's really not for no reason that Pohutu means constant splashing in Maori. Oh my god, these things just doesn't stop showing its strength and in fact in some good days the height of the geysers can actually reach up to 30 meters. It's an absolutely amazing place to be in. It feels like unlike anything I've seen on planet Earth. And I feel like I'm saying these kind of things really often when traveling in New Zealand. But it's really true. This place is so unique. But sadly, we have to move on because there is much more things to see in Tepuya. And now we are heading down the track. Moving on to the next geothermal attraction of Tepuya, we are going to check out a ton of bubbling mud. It's a really unique feature that you can find a lot of places around Rotorua, but it's always a treat. In front of every single one of the attractions that we are passing by, there is a big sign that tells us more information about it. But to be quite honest, bubbling mud is bubbling mud. It's just super mesmerizing to look at. I sometimes really wonder what the early settlers of New Zealand, especially in Maui, were thinking when they were wandering around this land and start discovering all those places. In fact, this one is the Papakura Geyser, which is actually now dormant but used to be as big as the Pohutu Geysers. So this place must have been quite a spectacle. That is some good bubbling mud. And according to our own bubbling mud expert, this is a good one. Look, look, look. Blop, blop. I love it so much. <laughs> As we walk around the geothermal park, we see more geysers, including the Tehoro geyser, which is otherwise known as the cauldron. And it's recently come back to life after three decades of being dormant, so that's really awesome. Another thing that we're checking out is the Narara Tuatara, which is the cooking pool. Our guide tells us that the local iwi, which is the word for tribe for Maori, have been using this cooking pool for centuries, using flax baskets to lower food into the cooking pool and the pool boils the food for them. It's a natural oven. Even from the other side of the geothermal park, we can still see the Pohutu Giza billowing its steam up into the air. It's absolutely huge and you can see it from quite a far away. Another really awesome aspect of this geothermal park is the fact that it's pretty much surrounded by native bush, which means we have lots of opportunity to check out some native birds like this little Tui here. And Tui are known for making some of the craziest noises when they do their bird calls. We then move on to the next section of this little tour, which is the Tepuya Pass site. A pass site is basically a traditional Maori village, and that gives us a great insight on how Maori used to live about 100 years ago. We get to see how they used to process their food, how they used to store their food, how they used to cook their food. It's a really cool place to visit. 
But moving on, we are heading back toward the geothermal park because we are going to be trying to make our way to the local Marai, where the local Maori ceremony is going to begin. But obviously, in such a beautiful and unique place, we get distracted a lot along the way, so it takes us a wee while to find our way. But luckily, we actually make it just on time for the beginning. First person that will do the welcoming will be the warrior. He will come out here. This warrior will come running down here somewhere. His, his duty is to present to you a peace offering. We're going to begin our ceremony with a porphyry. A porphyry is basically a way for a tribe to welcome outsiders. It's also a way for them to gauge if we are friends or foe. To begin with, we had to elect a chief, which happened to be that young English dude right here. Then a warrior is going to be challenging him and dropping a leaf right in front of him. If he's picking it up, that means he's coming in peace. If he doesn't, that means he's challenging the local tribe. Obviously, because the warrior is really frightening, he decides to pick it up. And with the ceremony out of the way, we are now welcome to proceed and make our way toward the Marai. The next part of the tour takes part in the amazing Rotofia Marae and a marae is a meeting place for the Maori and on the outside it has some beautiful carvings on the inside there's lots of painted and woven panels it's really an awe-inspiring place once we're all sat down in the marae, the Maori cultural performance begins we have loads of different styles of traditional Maori song and dance Cultural performance goes through different aspects of the Maori culture, from war chants from the Maori warriors to some traditional love songs. We watch different games that the Maori used to play, like Poi Rakao, which is different stick games where they need to throw it to each other. It's super impressive to watch. And of course, a major highlight of any Maori performance is the Haka, which is that war chant that you see the All Blacks doing at the beginning of every game that they play. The geothermal park and Maori culture at Tapuia has been an awesome way to spend our last day in Rotorua. Oh. You like a photo? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. This is a bit of a norm for yeah. these guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>